A very good evening to you all and welcome from me, Rukidi Edward Kijanangoma, to our second and final edition of News Tonight here on UBC TV uh, this Tuesday, the 19th day of uh, September 2023. And tonight we're going to look at uh, some of the top stories, including the FDC Extraordinary uh, Meeting that has elected Arias Lukwago to head the Katonga faction. We'll also be looking at uh, the UPDF that has struck ADF hideouts in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Also in our news tonight, we're going to look at uh, the proposal to build market centers for presidential initiative products uh, produced at all uh, skilling centers in the country. And in sports, we'll be looking at Taiba schools ready to defend titles in the independent sports tournaments. Some of the top stories that will be coming your way. Tonight, of course, remember that we're coming to you live online and on air from Broadcast House here on Now Avenue. Now let's get started. Now Uganda has joined forces with Suma, a renowned Turkish construction company, to embark on the construction of a cutting-edge multi-purpose indoor sports complex with a seating capacity of 15,000. Now this project is uh, slated to grace the premises of the National Council of Sports at Lugogo in Kampala. The partnership was unveiled as President as Pres Yoram Seveni, accompanied by the First Lady and Minister for Education and Sports, Ajedid Museveni, and Minister of State for Sports, uh, Peter Ogwang, and Suma Construction Company representatives. President Yoram Seveni welcomed Suma Construction Company to Uganda, underlining the government's commitment to support the construction. The First Lady expressed her gratitude to Honorable Ogwang and his dedicated team for their relentless efforts in realizing this project, emphasizing its potential to elevate the country's sports sector. Officials shared insights with the President and the First Lady of the complex. It will encompass a multifunctional indoor arena with a capacity of 15,000, a smaller indoor sports arena with seating for 3,000 spectators, an eight-lane, 25-meter swimming pool, a versatile standard sports field, and, and an athlete hostel with room for 60 individuals. We are committed. We have skills to develop those infrastructures within the shortest time possible. And the, the government of Uganda also will benefit from those facilities. This one I support Thank you, sir, sir. because we need it. We need that. We have solved uh, uh, the problem of the high altitude uh, training, training school for runners because we are very good in running. Now this one would cater for these, these ones. And then you also deal with, 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 with cricket, as you were saying. Uh, so then that would handle all, all, all these except, except the other football. Football which can be handled by other people. Mm. And, and athletics, the, the outdoor, the, the, the one. That's good. So I, this, uh, we, shall, we shall support it. I, I, I support it. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Prime Minister Robin Andamaja has assured the United Nations General Assembly taking place in New York that the government of Uganda is committed to utilize science, technology and innovation as a solution to achieving the sustainable development goals. Nabanja made the commitment while addressing the United Nations General Assembly during the heads of state and government for the 2023 high-level political forum on sustainable development goals under the auspices of the General Assembly in New York. Nabanja, while presenting a statement at the summit, highlighted the achievements the government of Uganda has made towards the realization of the SDGs. She says that the government of Uganda has established a national science, technology and innovation system centered on industrial value chains aligned to SDGs with the focus on growing the contribution of knowledge-based goods and services to the national economy. Our focus areas include, one, development of e-mobility solutions, including production of vehicles and their charging systems. Two, development 
and roll out of solutions for air quality monitoring. And three, productivity acceleration technologies for rural households. And four, industrialization based on agricultural products where, dom where the downstream value addition gains are distributed upstream along the value chain, eventually reaching the farmers who earn more income. As we have been challenged by the Secretary General, the fact that we are lagging in our promise cannot be the death knell of our blueprint, nor should this summit be a forum to point fingers, apportion blame, and certainly not to accept defeat. The Premier briefed the UN General Assembly that Uganda is enhancing the use of data to improve the efficiency, transparency and accountability of public services and governance in Uganda. The availability of quality statistics has been identified as one of the success factors of development agendas. As such, the government of Uganda is committed to continue expanding the number of SDG indicators. Nabanja says that Uganda has recently launched the Digital Transformation Roadmap, DTR, and reiterated Uganda's commitment to leaving no one behind in achieving the SDGs. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, says that many countries are in reverse in achieving the SDGs and a call on action to address the challenges. Young people, persons with disabilities, older persons and indigenous people have not been spared and are at the foremost receiving end of these crises. Despite commitments to eradicate poverty and to reduce hunger being at the core of this agenda, alarmingly, 1.2 billion people were still living in multidimensional poverty as of 2022. It is estimated that approximately 8% of global population, or 680 million people, will still be facing hunger in 2030. The SDG summit is being attended by the Vice President of Uganda, Jessica Alupo, ministers among them Justin Kasule Lumumba, in charge of general duties in the office of the Prime Minister, Foreign Affairs Minister General J.J. Odong, the Health Minister Dr. Jen Ruth Cheng, the Minister for Water and Environment Sam Cheptoris, and Okelo Oriem, State Minister for Foreign Affairs. The Prime Minister is expected to hold several side meetings but also make another presentation at the SDG summit. Now the Forum for Democratic Change Party has finally sealed its split as the Katonga faction elects own leaders. In what was described as an extraordinary meeting managed by the FDC National Chairman Waswa Virigwa, an interim leadership was elected, disowning the governance at National Kombi Party headquarters led by Patrick Amoriat Oboi. Now, the exercise, which was foiled by security at Busawala Nature's Beach, finally happened at Katonga, also an office for the party activism. Daniel Mugoya reports. A section of members of the Forum for Democratic Change political party made their way to Nature's Resort Beach in Busabara, where an extraordinary meeting was scheduled to take place. <laughs> the meeting which was organized by the FDC party chairman Waswa Birigwa turned rowdy as cocktail of security actors comprised of both Uganda Police Force and the Uganda People's Defense Forces scaled up the access roads leading to Nature's Beach. Last week, police in a letter addressed to Chairman Birigwa asked the latter to reconcile the party position before the intended meeting would happen. The loud silence here at Nature's Beach where an intended extraordinary meeting was to take place clearly portrays a flop. The meeting which was organized by Chairman Waswa Birigwa has not happened. What I can tell you that I have been informed that maybe there is a plan B to have the meeting at a different place. And the plan B was none other than Katonga Road, where the delegates finally held 
the extraordinary meeting. Despite the heavy deployment by police, the participants, including Ambassador Birgwa, accessed the venue. <laughs> Accordingly, Kampala Road Mayor Elias Lukwago, who joined the party in July 2020, has been elected as the party president to replace Patrick Oboy Amrait and Harold Kaija, who replaces Nathan Nandala Mafabi as the secretary general. You can agree or disagree with them. You understand? Yes. Once we have done that, I'll say we are almost done. Thank you so much. And as I said, I can spend so much time. Thank you so much. And I love you very much. During this suspension, they are deputies, i.e. The Honorable Elias Lukwago is the Deputy President. The Honorable Francis Mujuche, Deputy Treasurer General. Honorable Harold, Harold, Harold Kaiji, who is the Deputy Secretary General, will perform the deputies of these offices. The party is going to uh, revive. We are going to rescue and regroup and grow our party. It is no doubt the dubbed Dirty Money scandal which hit the FDC party was a catalyst to smoothen the road to split and the described extraordinary meeting was a blessing in disguise. We did not have an agenda. Uh, we had not programmed them. People were coming to discuss the state of the party and pass resolutions that move the party forward. So it so happens that that is one of the proposals that came to the fore. It was debated, uh, agreed on. The Najan Nkumbi faction, through a press conference addressed by the deputy spokesperson John Chikonyogo on Monday this week, foresighted the outcomes of the meeting called by Chairman Birigua. Now these delegates, you can get some people from Murubaga, they go to Busabala and they tell you are the delegates of FDC. Now we want to wind up the party. It will be very difficult for chairman to cross-check. These are some of the mistakes he can make and be detrimental to the party. We have warned him many times, but it has continued. Security officers spent the day battling a group commonly known as Chifesi, which made attempts to storm the Katonga block to destabilize the meeting, and in the process, several delegates were injured. <laughs> The group, one group is likely to attack another group. So we had to deploy. Because according to the constitution, our mandate is very clear. To keep law and order, protect people's property and their life. It is now more than clear that the FDC party has finally split, thanks to what was called an extraordinary meeting which happened here at Katonga Road. Uh, this place is also known as an active zim zone for the FDC political party. Daniel Mugoya, UBC News. That is what, that's what's happening in the uh, F, FDC uh, party and uh, of course showing that there's Definitely some wrangles happening there. Now, Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, launched yet another artillery and airstrike bombardments against the Allied Democratic Forces, ADF rebel hideouts in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Now, the strikes were carried in collaboration with Congo's Fardak Army alongside the UPDF ground troops in the thick forest that intercepted the splinter groups of wanted ADF top commanders, Musa Baluku and Ewan Abu Wakas, an Arab national. The ADF rebel sprinter group was caught off guard when the joint forces of UPDF and FADAC launched supersonic artillery and airstrikes on a number of ADF bases situated in the thick forested jungles in eastern DRC. Strikes after strikes and heavy pounding bangs could be heard at the enemy targeted spot areas. <laughs> UPDF targeted Musa Baluku camp along River Ituli in Mambasa general area and along Opa Forest, where Abu Akasi is currently 
hiding. Those who could not withstand the UPD firepower were captured. They are now under Faradase forces in Benin. We think a lot has happened. We have achieved a lot. We have killed so many. And we continue to do that. We follow them. We think the UPDF has done a lot. We think the biggest collection of the ADF today is somewhere which we are following day and night. And soon it should be some history to talk about. So far, so good. So I would say the priority here has been ensuring security and peace within the two neighboring countries, within the board boundaries, and also ensuring the ADF is totally annihilated and decimated. And that, I think, is the priority that makes the mountain division, not necessarily me, look at what its objectives are. The joint forces are taking the lead man hand of the most wanted ADF top commanders, Musa Baloku and Abu Akasi. Operation Suja Commander, Major General Diko Room urged the main ADF combatant to surrender or face the firepower directed at them from the Mountain Division Artillery Unit. Our reporter Haruna Mtesa Sira with that uh, uh, story there. Now, State Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Pastis Namuganza, has proposed that a market center be built for all presidential initiative products produced in all skilling centers as a hub. She was inspecting products showcased by trainees at Nakulabie Presidential Initiative Skilling Center situated in Mochiwonya in Rubanga Division, Kampala. The students showcased leather shoes, beds, fashion designs, indoor house materials, hairstyles, and designs made in the last six months of skills training. At Nankula Presidential Initiative Skilling Center, 400 students enrolled. 300 were girls and over 50 were boys trained. At the event, the trainees appreciated President Seveni for initiating the skiing program. <laughs> Gasimanya and Sova di Quata Vatian, Gasimanyo, Muguagu, Nanang and Gakanin, Gwenda, Munta, CV, Ingam, and Iono Queringa, Bamanta de Quam, Magazimanji. President Museven, Tukweva Zanyo Nay, a Sovolo Konga Musente, Mum Project Tenex, is going and moving on. And they make Komaku Feka. The State Minister for Lands and Urban Development, Pasis Namuganza, appealed to President to build a market center for all presidential initiative products from all skilling centers. <laughs> And for us, we shall load the resources as legislators, as members of cabinet. We shall load and make sure that at least as we budget, we add more money uh, to state house to be able to implement such a program. Bura, okusinga kuya muno atu the skills in Nala. We muri financial discipline. We muri okwe fiiriza. We muri skills a management wa ntuba kuwa tootia. Ezozo na. Through how to earn a living, how to be self reliant, and you say don't go there because for you you are supporting FDC or noob, and you stop your, your, your children to go there. So we ask Ugandans to, you know, to prioritize these projects that government bring because the money is for, not for President Museveni. It's for Ugandans. We are the ones paying the taxes. Nachirembe Karehima trained in air dressing and makeup. Do makeup, bridal makeup, simple makeup, all sorts of hair styling. I'm a professional lady and I feel proud of my job because right now I consider it as a job because I'm working outside there and I get money. Yet I was doing nothing before. Chamber de Denisi dropped out of school and later trained in shoemaking and leather designing appealed to president to invest more in use. Project Tuasokera mubi papula, 
Ramara ni tuda kudiva. The executive director, director of industrial training, Biakatunda Patrick, said the students in the presidential initiative can graduate to level one certificate of competency. <laughs> levels of competency. So given the levels of the presidential initiative, their level of competency is at level one. So we are going to change the format. We have been giving them modular. We are now going for certificate of competency at level one. Robert Katamba, Jamilu Sekadja, reporting for UBC News. <laughs> Uh, the Anti-Corruption High Court in Kololo has granted an application for cross-examining government witnesses in a civil matter filed by the Minister for Karamoja Affairs, Mary Goretti Chitutu, in which she is challenging her trial on diversion of Karamoja iron sheets. Minister Chitutu, in her application, challenges her trial, citing grounds of torture, mistreatment and violation of her rights while in detention. We have more in this story. The case that is before me. What do I think is the proper thing? The Minister for Karamoja Affairs, Mary Goretti Chitutu, appeared at the anti-corruption court in Kololo before Judge Jeno Kajuga proceeded with the hearing of the case. She filed against the Attorney General in this case. Minister Chitutu is challenging her trial, in which she is accused of mismanaging iron sheets meant for Karamoja region, citing torture and mistreatment while in detention. In court, four witnesses, including ASP areas to SJ, Naboshi Sophie, or two are Juliet and Beata Jenim, so affidavits in the matter before court, these were presented by the Attorney General's office. However, the applicants' lawyers led by Judy Biamukama prayed to court to grant them permission to cross-examine the witnesses for clarity of their affidavits. Biamukama further cited that cross-examination is vital as it tests the credibility of the witnesses, leaving other factors constant. To the contrary, this application was objected to by the defense lawyers led by Senior State Attorney Johnson Natwera, citing wastage of court's time arguing that the applicant had all the time to file rejoinders of the affidavits, but never utilized it. After listening to submissions of both sides, in her brief ruling, Judge Jen Okuo Kajuga granted the Chitutu's application on account that there is no way the witnesses will be prejudiced. Court proceeded with cross-examining the witnesses, starting with ASP Elias Tuesije, who had a hard time to defend their affidavits. Last month, court halted the criminal trial of Chitutu, despite of the fact that she is facing offenses of causing of loss of public property and conspiracy to defraud pending the determination of this application which is alleging torture. Rebecca Nantongo, UBC News. News Tonight takes a short break. We'll be returning with much more. Water, please. Can I play with Momo? No. Ha! Hey, can I play with Momo? Mm. Ha! Here's our match and Oh, huh, very good. Seven maker? Twenty. Can I play with Momo? Unfortunately, no. Ha! Baby, let's go. When paying with MTN Momo comes with more benefits for everyone, it just doesn't make sense not to have it. Hello, I've come for rent. Can I pay with Momo? Mm. Ha. Yes, yes, you can. Pay or shop with MTN Momo and get cash back every week. It's free of charge. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 3 hash. Juko. Yo, how are you? Check the shopping man. What's your secret? <laughs> mm. Have you heard of the Paris Development Model PDM? Yes, I did, but I thought it was just a talk. I know, but yeah, mm. it is real. Mm. I and a few friends together mm -hmm. formed a circle, accessed money from the PDM, mm. invested in a portrait project, mm. and now things are moving. Uh, 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 Juko. <laughs> I thought I was one of your friends. You are. But you left me behind. I didn't leave you in poverty. Mm. Go out do, uh -huh. just visit your LC2 chairperson and mm. your parish chief mm. Eh? Mm. and start the process of economic transformation. Mm. Eh, just like that. Okay. <laughs> the parish development model is an initiative from the government of Uganda mm. through the Ministry of Local Government mm -hmm. designed to transform all lives of Ugandans for the better. 
PDM, my parish, my development, my life. So, you are ready to invest in Airtel's initial public offering? Good choice. I'm going to show you how to do it straight from your phone. First, you're going to want to make sure you have a securities central depository SCD account. Dial star 185 star 85 hash from your Airtel number. Choose Airtel IPO purchase from the available options. Enter your valid national identification number when prompted. Before you purchase, there are a few things you need to know. The minimum purchase is 2,500 shares. The share price is 100 Uganda shillings. Select the number of shares you wish to purchase. Choose your relevant broker for the purchase. Enter your Airtel money pin to confirm the transaction. Congratulations, you received a confirmation message of your successful purchase. The doctor says you are getting better. I have a list of suspects in my file here, but I need you to help me identify the thief who attacked you. Thief again. Malaria is a thief. Don't let it rob you and your loved ones. Prevent it by sleeping under a mosquito net. Clear bushes and all stagnant water around you. If you notice any symptoms, go to a health center near you to test and treat and ensure to complete your full dose to avoid severe malaria, which could lead to death. Did you know that you can safely and conveniently make your school fees payments anytime, any school, anywhere using Airtel money? Oh yes! Simply pick up your phone and dial star 185 hash. Select option 6, school fees. Choose between school pay, peg pay or shore pay. Enter student number. Enter amount, confirm name and transaction. Enter Airtel money pin. A confirmation message will be sent to you upon a successful transaction. Airtel money. Instant, secure, borderless. Welcome back from that break, and this is News Tonight here on UBC TV. My name is Rukidi Edward Kijanangoma. Now, the National Population Council has organized the second dividend seminar to discuss new public policy strategies based on the democratic, demographic concept of mitigation and adaptation by utilizing the knowledge gained from demographic expertise. At the opening, State Minister for Microfinance and Cooperatives, Chair Yune Haruna Kasolo, who was representing the State Minister for Finance and Economic Planning, Amos Lugolobi, highlighted on this. The National Population Council says there is need to formulate policy strategies and national plans to help in the best use of the current population dynamics for the economic and social development of Uganda. The State Minister for Microfinance and Cooperative says National Population Council and all stakeholders need to guide Uganda's policy makers on demographic change with the potential to capture a demographic dividend. If you want to support to control infant mortality. This promotes wealth creation. <coughs> These programs are there. This support one another. This work together to ensure that Uganda is benefit. People are just there sharing the money, and these are not the targeted beneficiaries. This was during the second demographic dividend seminar organized by the National Population Council, Macau University, and the United Nations Population Fund on the theme linking demography to wealth creation. So we think if we have this discussion over the next three days, we are going to agree on how do we change this population age structure and create wealth, which will contribute to economic growth of our country, harness the demographic dividend, and also contribute to achieving our vision 2040 as a country. The objective for this National Strategy Planner Seminar for policymakers and advanced scholars in social sciences include utilizing the seminar content in future presentations for Uganda's policymakers. If the younger people have skills and competences, 
they would be able to uh, contribute to the wealth of the country, uh, much as they also be, of course, contributing to their own selves and their families. So um, demography is very much linked to wealth creation because um, the more the number of younger people who are skilled and who are competent, um, the higher the probability of them contributing to the wealth of the nation. Uh, but it's also important to have the appropriate knowledge to respond to those changes and to shape those uh, changes. And uh, I think uh, this is uh, probably something that will, in other words, uh, come over and over again. There will also be a review to project Uganda's population dynamics until 2040. Robert Katamba, UBC News. Kampala Capital City Authority has conducted an operation in the city to rescue all purported street children loitering the streets of Jinja Road, Wandegea and Nakawa, among others in the capital, Kampala. Over 161 street children have been rescued and will be taken to Kobolin Youth Rehabilitation and Skilling Center in a park district for rehabilitation. The operation was conducted with the help of KCCA law enforcement team and Uganda police force. Over the years, Kampala Capital City Authority has taken lead in operations geared at removing street kids from the streets of Kampala, but often are overwhelmed with the numbers that return back to these streets. During the operation, a total of 161 street children were picked from various parts of Kampala at street junctions in the central business district, with most numbers hailing from Karamoja. These have been taken to Cobline Youth Rehabilitation and Skilling Center in Napak District for rehabilitation. <laughs> Section 10 of the Child Protection Ordinance 2022 prohibits any person from sending a child to beg or solicit for gifts in a public place, street, office, or any business or commercial establishment. The Director for Gender, Production, and Community Service at the Kampala Capital City Authority, Sheila Bironje, says there are more operations to rescue street children and design strategies targeting proprietors behind the crime. The ordinance is very clear. Anybody, including people that dish out money to the street kids, are supposed to be arrested. So it's, it's not that probably we, we want the activity to happen, but this happens because there are so many stakeholders in this. Like I mentioned, some other people were getting money out of this, but because there is a law, we are now very comfortable that the, the public should see that the law is actually incriminating the people that are abusing this kind of activity. The 161 children rescued from the street have been transported to Cobline Youth Skilling Centre in Park, which is under the Ministry of Gender and Social Development. KCCA and the funding is, is a part of KCCA budget. Some of the support comes from other other partners like NGOs and then we, we, we mentioned that we are working with the Ministry of Gender. Some of the city dwellers, however, say the city authorities are far from achieving their goal given that each day fresh young beggars are brought to the streets through a syndicated network that involves their parents. <laughs> In June 2022, KCCA launched the Child Protection Ordinance to protect children from abuse including child labor and trafficking. The ordinance provides that a person who contravenes these provisions commits an offense and is liable upon conviction to a fine not exceeding 40,000 shillings or imprisonment for a period not exceeding six months or both. Justin Nakami reporting. Now let's go back to...
issues pertaining to the FDC party. And uh, but the framers of the Forum for Democratic Change Party Constitution of 2015 as amended uh, specifies each role one has to play with the ongoing bittering, bickering in the FDC. The issue at hand is who is supposed to do what in uh, the party. Our court reporter Nama Monde Debra brings you the roles of some FDC party leaders per their constitution. Dispute over meaning the Forum for Democratic Change Party Constitution in 2015, the aim was to steer good governance and to bring sanity in the party, despite their aspired dreams of being a ruling party one time. Under Chapter 7 of the Forum for Democratic Change Constitution, this is where the Constitution specifies the laws of any elected leader in the party. Article 28 highlights the roles of the party president, chairperson of the party, secretary general, and the chairperson electoral commission of the party, among other portfolios. Article 28.1 spells out the roles and powers of the national chairperson. This includes to convene and chair the national delegates conference and the national council. The delegates conference is the supreme party organ of the FDC. All resolutions passed through the delegates conference are binding on the party. And most of the committees of the party, including NEC and uh, National Council and the rest, they are appointed in the delegates conference. Then oversee discipline and overall ethical standards of, in the party. In addition to that, there can be called a delegates conference at the request of the National Executive Committee of the party. The constitution also charges the national chairperson with the powers to ensure harmony within the party. Article 23 of FDC also specifies circumstances in which an extraordinary national delegates conference can be called on and the prior events before holding the conference. If they are to call for this delegates conference, they organize all delegates available in all districts in the country, countrywide, because it is a national delegates conference. All delegates that are called for, they are invited formally by the chairperson. For the delegates conference to happen, usually the chairperson notifies the party president and the secretary general. The delegates conference can be called when the chairperson so desires. Also, there is that provision, Article 23.5. Secondly, when he receives a petition from delegates, then uh, when uh, he receives a petition from 30% of the delegates. Article 28 describes the secretary general of the party as the principal and in charge of executing accounting and head of secretariat of the party. Then, responsible for compliance with all legal obligations of the party. They shall be the custodian of the party seal. Custodian is, if you want the party seal, it is kept with the secretary. And responsible for maintaining corporate image of the party and any other activities that may be assigned to him. When the party is to hold any elections, the constitution clearly gives the chairperson electoral commission powers to conduct or coordinate the elections. The chairperson electoral commission is also mandated to be in charge of voter and civic education in the party. <laughs> Ya ina kuorganizinga, kulaba, roadmap ya electoral commission ya guwange ili etia, tusoro kutegeke ya fe. Evyo kuorganizinga registers, mchibina, evyo, mirimoje. Evyo kulaba, nga at least, obude, bu, kwa atibwa mkulonda, haba ntu hawe nja uro, wakumekinga shua, ntibu kwa atagana ne mirimoje electoral commission. With the ongoing wrangles in the Forum for Democratic Change Party, renowned city lawyer Kabuye says further amendments of the FDC party constitution needs to be done to clarify on the roles of other party members to avoid future recurrence of ugly scenes. There, are, there is a wide spectrum of powers given to the chairperson of the party. So especially in as far as calling for the extraordinary meeting is concerned. 
For the delegates conference, it is specific when he can call for it. He goes on to give him a wide spectrum of powers. When he so decides that tomorrow we are having the extraordinary meeting, we must have it, provided he has communicated a place and time under uh, the framers of this constitution of the party. They can as well put a period or put um, uh, try to bridge a gap and direct on when he can perform these roles as far as they are concerned. Although the constitution party satisfies laws for each leader, the current rangos are also attached to streamers and management of funds. Deborah Nama Monde, UBC News. A lawyer, Lawrence Kawi, they are shedding more light on uh, the FDC party constitution, especially on the roles of uh, different party officials in as, what, in, in as far as what they are supposed uh, to do and where they stop. Now, the Secretary General Uganda National Teachers Union, uh, Felbert Baguma, has told the media that motivation is the essence that will spur development. He said that as students report back to school for third term, teachers need to focus on issues that will help students succeed. So close by the As schools enter third term, the Secretary General Uganda National Teachers Union, Philbert Baguma, has called upon teachers to utilize the short time in the term. We should dream and say there is effective teaching and learning in our schools and education institutions. Teachers are human beings. And therefore, that discrimination, that discrepancy in salary, where you have the same qualifications and someone earns five times more than you do. A close look at the schools indicates a readiness of the teachers to handle students in time. At Uganda Matters High School, Rubaga, candidate classes have shown a readiness in the exams that are expected to begin next month for Senior 4 and Senior 6 in November. Still working hard to make sure that we pass. Yeah, we are working hard. To see. I've been just from class during my first course um, for my year after two weeks time. But God willing, we shall make it at our school. The deputy head teacher in charge of academics, John Kalule, said the school has given the life skills to learners as it's stipulated by the new curriculum. See, we have had the candidates for now a week. But there are very few who have not come back. In senior four, counting the only five students who are not reported and senior six all of them are the reported. The deputy head teacher in charge of academics, Frank Sandy Makere College School, noted that they are using a teacher students' approach where both participate in learning. The approach helps learners to gain self confidence. So the teachers are approachable to the students. Eh? If you observe, when you're moving around, our students are very welcoming and they are very confident. In class, they give feedback. So the teachers find it easy to deal with the students. We don't have the type of students that keep quiet when the teacher is in class. At Hellite High School in Wakiso District, the school administration that they have prepared the candidate classes for exams. We, are, we mind so much about the product that we bring out to the community. We are living in a competitive world that requires a very good product in terms of skill, in terms of reasoning, in terms of overcoming the challenges out there. So for the candidates who are living right now and going out at the end of the term, Pupils of Primary 7 also get ready to write their exams in November at Chireka Grammar Primary School in Wakiso. The candidates have been prepared to sit for the exams. The head teacher, Epia Kautai Francis, says that everything has been done for the learners to sit for the last papers this year and revision has been embarked on. And we're ready for the examinations to come. And that's why we brought them a bit earlier so they settled down. Uh, immediately when they came to uh, some examinations, we had our, our own a special, what we call a special set of examinations, which we gave them, because from outside, 
we gave them, it was marked out of the school. Uncle, you should see London. Oh, my boy. This has been five years. Yeah. You should see Uganda. Ah, yes. <laughs> Come on, guys. Huh? That's my former school. Soon, there will be more than one million children learning like this for free. Thank you, Uganda, for imagining it with us and making us the fastest growing telecom in the country over the past five years. Welcome back. Let's have a look at uh, business news now. Uh, the Secretary General Uganda Cooperative Alliance, Ivan Asimwe, has called on government to expedite the process of investigating the diversion of 150 billion shillings meant for the revival of cooperative unions across the country. Asimwe revealed in an interview that such incident portrays a bad image of the cooperative sector in Uganda, which is already in dire need. We have more in this story. of Uganda in the mid-90s embarked on a campaign to empower farmers with the aim of reviving cooperative unions that had been closed after World Bank advised government to privatize all government prostatal bodies and embrace capitalism. In trying to revive cooperative unions that acted as engines of Uganda's agro-led economy from the colonial times to post-independent Uganda, Government allocated a tune of 150 billion shillings to revamp the struggling cooperative unions across the country. But unfortunately, the funds were allegedly diverted. The money for cooperatives, how it has been misused, it's very unfortunate. But you know, once an issue is under investigation, then you don't need to, to speak a lot about it. It is alleged that a few of the unions received the said funds, the matter that Uganda Cooperation Alliance failed to confirm after being sidelined in the process of decision making. Because the Uganda Cooperative Alliance did not sit on any committee that was verifying all this, yet ideally, as per Section 29 of the Cooperative Societies Act, Uganda Cooperative Alliance should have been at the center of this, whatever was going on. The corporation is now calling upon government to quicken the process of investigating what could have led to the diversion of funds to avoid tarnishing the image of the corporation sector. We really request as cooperators, let the government quicken the process of investigation so that cooperators know exactly what is happening. So that he, because where we have been moving, we have been moving on the right trajectory, and we wouldn't want as cooperators again to have those negative publications across the board. Joseph Oko, UBC. Sasura Omagura me MTN Momo Oro to could this sent Oleweki Are you get MTN Momo pay? Ogena kubango to pasaganya wurudi nyonyo Oru ware ero to gavye pitches a fe ebiri Ezi source that was whatever match and swabiri Muchara Hadija Petra Station ya Moka Mwami Charles na ye to vakumu a pichie Chitufu mpangu de Nendoch men zino zifunye I was so surprised when to take petrol station. Nesanga onga. Already empty and yet to say, young gentleman, but ever who is my baby to be a job. It was a to have a Nadara or Munti and Nari in a business. And Tisa was in all to get out of a Mumbere, your quarter saint, a Zomun Peke, and Tibu Yomi and Na of nature to eat a merchant cord. To gain that to some Mesawa and to Komogaso, Gobuta quarter saint, a Zobu, Nanga was the funny the Kusimiabu. Vera steady to gather pin cord yo. Pin code yo yo we ka. Kuzesa Momo app. Onyika star. E Momo kagatano star. Satu hush.
Welcome back. Let's have an item on uh, sports news. Uganda Dance, uh, Dance Sport Federation has added a joint clinical research center on its list of uh, partners. Now, the aim is uh, to use uh, sport to spread a message of better health through exercise to curb avoidable ailments. Uganda Dance Sport Federation is just years in existence but has already ticked the boxes in regards to meeting demands of the new sports law that requires the Federation to have a 75% national spread. On top of involving its major stakeholders, the youth across the country through schools, the Federation has also engaged corporate bodies, the latest of which is Joint Clinical Research Center. Uganda Dance Sport Federation. Amazina Gano, Nemizan, Atebi Tuyan, Okubera, Fit, Gatuli, Bamani, Emilia Fedukula Bunch. This latest collaboration comes as Joint Clinical Research Center celebrates 30 years of existence and targets using dance sport as therapy to ease non communicable diseases. We invited them to bring in professionalism. Like Daniel mentioned, sports and physical fitness is just one of that element in physical wellness. So we wanted to bring in professionalism. So we are trying to bring all people together. We know that we need a health mind, and being that the generation and the population of our country, 70%, we are that age of the youth, and all of us have to be youthful. And according to the environment where we are living and our health setups, so doing physical, doing sports, I think it's one of the areas we have to embark on to see that we can survive. Joint Clinical Research Center joins others like Alliance Francais and French Embassy in Uganda, which are instrumental in the breaking genre of the sport that gained entry into the Olympics. John Burns Center, UBC News. 7 means to 11 in the studios of UBC TV. Thank you so much for your company. We've finally come to the end of this bulletin. My name is Rukidi Edward Kijanongoma, wishing you a blessed night and have a great night. UBC, inspiring Uganda. Did you know that you can safely and conveniently make your school fees payments anytime, any school, anywhere, using Airtel money? Oh yes! Simply pick up your phone and dial star 185 hash. Select option 6, school fees. Choose between school pay, peg pay or shore pay. Enter student number. Enter amount, confirm name and transaction. Enter Airtel money pin. A confirmation message will be sent to you upon a successful transaction. Airtel money. Instant, secure, borderless. Juko. Yo. Ha, wa, chiku, wa. Check the shopping man. What's your secret? We got on. Haven't you heard of the Parish Development Model PDM? Yes, I did, but I thought it was just a talk. Ah, no, Sebat, yeah. Mm. It is real. Mm. I and a few friends together mm -hmm. formed a circle, accessed money from the PDM, mm. invested in a portrait project, mm. and now things are moving. Uh, 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 Juko. <laughs> I thought I was one of your friends. You are. But you left me behind. I didn't leave you in poverty. Mm. Go out do, uh -huh. just visit your LC2 chairperson and mm. your parish chief mm. Eh? Mm. and start the process of economic transformation. Mm. Eh, just like that. Okay. <laughs> the parish development model is an initiative from the government of Uganda mm. through the Ministry of Local Government mm -hmm. designed to transform all lives of Ugandans for the better. <laughs> PDM, my parish, my development, my life. 
Did you know that our number one value as a nation is to respect and protect the environment? With the current population increase of Uganda and industrialization, this has increased pressure on the natural resources, resulting into environmental degradation and global warming. Developing countries like Uganda could face 80% of the global climate change effects by the year 2030 if no action is taken. Join us here on UB.